Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on Althusser's views of education. So far in this series, we've already examined the functionist views of education as suggested by Durkheim, Parsons and Davis and Moore. We've also discussed how functionism and Marxism are the opposite sides of the same coin, agreeing that education performs certain functions, but disagreeing on the motives behind them. This is evident when looking at Louis Althusser, a neo-Marxist whose ideas can be described as structural Marxism. In other words, he suggests that social institutions such as education shape our behaviour. Althusser suggested that the ruling class were aware that the working class may revolt if they overcame their false class consciousness. So they needed to control them through the use of social institutions. This was because the ruling classes were outnumbered by the working classes. Althusser suggested that this was achieved through two different types of state apparatus the repressive state apparatus, or the RSA, and the ideological state apparatus, or the ISA. The RSA controlled the masses through coercion and force, and this is evident in the ruling class control of the police, military and judiciary. However, control through force alone would be difficult due to the numerical superiority of the working classes, and so the ruling classes also needed to control the way the working classes thought. Althusser suggested this was achieved through ideological state apparatuses such as education, religion and the media. The more successful the ISA were, the less the RSA had to do. Education, Althusser argued, had replaced religion as the primary method of controlling the masses in his era, which was the 1960s and 70s. So what does the ISA do? Well, it prepares students for their future roles in employment by teaching them the specialist skills they require to be part of the workforce. This may seem like a repetition of Durkheim's ideas, but instead of seeing employment as being vital to a fully functioning society, Althusser suggested education was preparing students for a life of exploitation. He also suggested that education reproduces the dominant ideology of the ruling class, often referred to as hegemony. This ensures that future workers are docile and submissive, rather than challenging any inequality in society. Finally, Althusser suggested that education reproduced and legitimised inequality by simultaneously promoting the idea of meritocracy while placing barriers in the way of working class students achieving. This myth of meritocracy suggested that working class students did not achieve because they didn't work hard enough, rather than accepting that success was blocked by many cultural and material factors. So how do schools achieve this? Firstly, through often a fragmented curriculum that doesn't really explain the bigger picture of society. Interdisciplinary subjects such as politics, economics and sociology are only available at higher levels rather than being core learning. Similarly, subjects like history are taught from a British rather than a global perspective, which means students have some knowledge, but not enough to be critical in their thinking. Secondly, the ISA operates in schools through the teaching of core skills for employment. Things like literacy and numeracy, key skills for the economy, are taught on a daily basis to students from an early age, whereas subjects like drama, dance and the arts are relatively ignored. Furthermore, subjects that are linked to one's own culture, such as history, literature, music, are often dominated by the tastes of the ruling class, while working class and minority ethnic culture is largely ignored. This leads to the alienation of working class students, as they do not feel represented within education. Finally, and most poignantly, the myth of meritocracy is promoted. Students are taught from an early age that hard work and natural ability leads to success, but the obstacles that many working class students face are ignored, and this leads to low self-esteem from working class students if they are unable to negotiate these barriers and achieve. The blame is, is pl not placed on the unequal system, Rather, it is placed upon the student themselves. While Althusser was writing in a not too distant past, the 1970s, it is still useful to apply his ideas to contemporary society to show a deeper understanding of his work. The fragmented curriculum can be seen in the teaching of individual subjects and asking students to choose from a limited range of subjects at higher levels. Subjects like sociology link into other areas such as psychology, economics, history, literature, language, media and politics. And yet often these, these subjects are taught in isolation or out of context. Further evidence of students being taught skills for employment is the compulsory sitting of maths and English until a passing grade is achieved at level 2 or GCSE. If students do not study for these qualifications, if they haven't already achieved them, 
they are unable to receive any funding from central government. Changes to the curriculum, particularly those already discussed in our previous video on Durkheim and education, are other examples of the ideological state apparatus. The teaching of British history from the Magna Carta to the internet may promote social solidarity, but it also instills the dominant ideology of the ruling class onto the masses. And finally, the adoption of in-school policies such as growth mindset that promote ideas of resilience and hard work whilst having some academic merit look to shift the blame for underachievement of working class kids onto not trying hard enough or having a negative mindset when there are many other reasons that they may fail. This is a form of legitimising inequality. Now, of course, we need to evaluate these ideas. Functionists would disagree with Althusser on the motives for these actions. They would suggest that the promotion of social solidarity, value consensus and meritocracy all have beneficial functions for society. Others have criticised Althusser for his lack of empirical evidence when suggesting the ruling classes look to control the working classes. The ideas are theoretical rather than evidence-based. Postmodernists would suggest there are more pathways to success or to show ability in contemporary society than through education. Evidence for this can be found in the growth of social media entrepreneurs and new technologies. A final criticism would be that it is too deterministic, with many working class students going on to succeed or further study. Although a counter argument to this could be that there are still fewer than one in 10 students from the poorest backgrounds in higher education. Now that concludes our look at Althusser's views on education. Uh, thank you for watching.